Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of my sister, Candace, and I, I'd like to thank you for joining us this afternoon as we spend a little time together remembering and celebrating the life of our father, Robert Ingram. Of course, it is difficult to lose a friend, any friend. It's especially difficult to say farewell, even if it's just for a time, to say farewell to a parent. On the one hand, we, of course, mourn the days that um, will never be. But we would be remiss not to remember and give thanks for the days that we could spend together. And they were many. My father died a day short of his 89th birthday, and um, that's a long life. And we feel he lived a good life. And so it's with thankfulness in our hearts that we um, spend time remembering who he was, the things that made him unique, funny, special, um, intelligent, and, and uh, wise unto not only earthly things, but spiritual things. So thank you for joining us, and uh, we hope that this time together will be a blessing to you uh, and to ourselves as we remember.
on April 9, 2021, Robert Bob Ingram entered into rest and now awaits the call of his loving Heavenly Father. Born April 10, 1932, he was just one day short of his 89th birthday. Bob, also known as Robert, Buddha, Chapa, and Dad, was born to Herbert Stanley Ingram and Minnie Smith in Suwannee, Tennessee. He was largely raised by his mother and grandparents as his father passed away when he was just a few years old. His only sibling was his younger brother, Bill, who preceded him. Bill and Minnie later moved to California, but Bob remained on the East Coast. He attended Horace Mann High School and then attended Southern University. Dad used to say he was very popular in college, not because he was class president, but because he was the only student to have 24-hour access to a phone. Because of his job while working as a lab tech while in school, Dad needed access to a phone to take emergent calls. As a result, everyone wanted to be his best friend. Dad would have had lots of friends, phone or not, as he was ever a people person. He loved to have casual conversations with pretty much anybody. And we mean anybody. He loved to chat it up with salespeople, bank tellers, church members, whomever. This is a characteristic of Dad that will always be part of his lore. Dad's senior year also turned out to be his senorita year. As one Glenna Robinson, also known as Glimmer and Skeeter, his tender titles for Mom, and Haint, yes, I called her Haint, and we both thought it was hilarious, Anyhow, in Dad's senior year, one Glenna Robinson came to town. Unlike Dad, who'd grown up an Adventist, Mom was new to the faith. Though in this sense she was something of a fish out of water, she quickly fit in and also became popular. Not because she had a phone, so much as lots of guys wanted to use Dad's phone to call her. Never one to miss an opportunity, it seems Dad made good use of that phone himself and talked his way into a dinner date one evening. In this, I say date very loosely, it was a supper-time meal in the school cafeteria. But hey, you take what you can get, right? We never learned why, but for whatever reason, Eager Beaver Bob was late for his dinner date. When he finally did show up, Mom let him know it was his lucky night. He could have two desserts as she was about to leave. Mom was not a difficult or demanding person, but she was always clear about the things that mattered to her. Evidently, Dad talked his way out of that one, for a few months later, he convinced Mom to exchange her cap and gown for an engagement ring and a wedding gown. They were married just after graduation by Elder Ed Banks, a religion teacher at the school. Three kids later, the two had become five, Bobby, Candy, and Joel. A move from Syracuse, New York to Nashville, Tennessee brought our home to the place that we typically think of as home. Dad always worked for the church. He had other opportunities for employment, to be sure, but being a part of a larger or greater good was important to him. In Nashville, he worked as credit and collections manager for Madison Hospital.
Every family has our great traditions and family memories. Ours does too, and they are not in short supply. A small sample will give you a taste of the memories that still bring smiles to our faces. The non-trip trip. Sometimes Dad had to travel for work. One time he had to be away for a few days. On this occasion, Bobby wanted to go with Daddy, but not being able to, he at least wanted to help him prepare. As Dad was just about to go, Bobby proudly announced that he'd helped by taking the water hose and filling the tank. Thanks, son. Stage Fright From time to time, one or more of us kids would have to be on stage, be it a school play or special music at church. Should we scan the audience and locate our parents, Mom and Dad would always be there lending their support in two very opposite ways. Mom would be holding up a single finger, reminding us to stand up straight. And Dad would be right beside her, making faces to try and make us forget our lines or start to laugh. Thanks, Dad. How many would you like to order? For various reasons, Dad was ever the salesman. Rare was the time that he didn't have some side gig going. With a degree in business administration, we guess he felt some perpetual desire to put that degree to good use. Some of his ventures went well. Others just took up garage space, and among these were the Fudge Factory Sweet Store, Bavarian wax figurines, alpine air purifiers, stun guns for personal protection, and evidently to put some zing back in one's life. Auto detailing and supplies, personal debt restructuring, and, well, you get the idea. Basically, Dad loved to make plans and keep busy. And in this, he succeeded. Obedience Training One great memory later in life came one Sunday evening when my sister and I were visiting our parents in their Avon Park home. Soft tacos were a long-time family tradition, and they were on the menu that night. Victoria and I had thought it would be nice to have pomegranates for dessert. So the pomegranates had been opened and their lovely red seeds were in their little bowl ready to spoon out. When they were being placed on the table, I noticed that they matched perfectly the other bowls already on the table holding the fixings for the tacos. As Dad was already seated at the table, I joked that tonight we just had to try our tacos California style. With pomegranates. Well, everyone but Dad was busy in the kitchen for the next few minutes. But coming back to the table, there was Dad with his four tacos already made, pomegranates and all. Better say grace twice. The long and short of it was that there was never a dull. Our home life was simple in many ways, but Dad and Mom always made sure it was a place of love, support, and encouragement. We especially wish to give our eternal gratitude for Mom and Dad always giving of themselves, sacrificially really, so that their kids could have the best possible childhoods. From custom-made birthday cakes, to bikes at Christmas, trains and dolls, to time with friends at Indian Creek Summer Camp, to music lessons for all the kids, and a Christian education on top of all that. Mom and Dad always put their kids first. We are the benefactors of their love and faith, and for this 
we are eternally grateful. There are many more layers to Dad's life we could share for hours on end. But one trait of his is especially important to mention. Throughout his entire life, Dad was always on the lookout for people in need. Be it a person with car trouble, someone carrying groceries along the side of the road, whomever, Dad always had a great desire to help those struggling in life or less well off. Returning to our family storyline, in 1977 we moved from Nashville, Tennessee to Berrien Springs, Michigan. Dad took a call to be Director of Student Finance and later moved to Credit and Collections at the school until his retirement in 1996. The Sunshine State or the state of the perpetual left-turn signal, as I like to call it, was a great fit for Mom and Dad, even though they always missed the hum of activity associated with a university life. Many friends and colleagues had retired in the area, and their renewed friendships made life there most enjoyable. Of note among these were ties to Bill and Mavis Seeger, Tom and Phyllis Amos, and Jim and Gloria Armstrong. We are not only thankful for their friendship personally, but for the countless ways in which their love and support made our parents' lives in Avon Park meaningful. In 2018, Glenna passed away at the age of 86. As one would expect, her passing was a seminal event in Dad's life as well. Ultimately, Dad decided he would like to remain in the area and made an assisted living community his new home. He loved the water and sunsets he could take in every night from his elevated patio. Independent to the end, he did his own laundry, prepared most of his own meals, and only gave up driving and sold his car two weeks before his death. For the past four years, since my mother's death, it's been my habit to talk with Dad in the morning and evening as I drive to work. At first, I thought the timing of these calls cheapened them somehow. Dad was only getting my drive time, a time lost to anything else. But then I understood that I called him at these times because they were my best moments to speak with him uninterrupted, and it allowed me to begin and end my day with him. Even now, I have to consciously fight the urge to reach out for speed dial number three as I go to work or head home. This daily time together was important to me but I never realized the degree to which I'd miss it, and his voice, until he was gone. One morning, a few days before my dad passed, such feelings came to mind in the words, I wish you could know how I miss you now. Ultimately, this phrase found its way into lyrics for a song, and I'd like to end our time together by playing this for you now. I'd also like to thank Wayne Koros for playing and singing this piece. Really, you should be thanking him too. For but for him, I might be singing it myself. And trust me, that would neither begin or end well. So thank you, Wayne. I wish you could know. <laughs> Give for a moment to 
So many young memories so fresh and alive Basking and crispy and your late pepper too I certainly know I will miss you What I give for a moment to talk on the phone To thank you again for the love you have shown Flesh in my flesh and bone in my bone. I wish you could know how I miss you. Ruler of heaven, father of light, take care of my dad this darkest of night till that bright morning when my greatest delight will be knowing I'll never more miss you what a wonderful thing not to miss you My sister and I would like to thank each of you for joining us as we have remembered and celebrated the life of our dear father. Some of you are no doubt here because you knew and loved him just as we did. Some of you are here for us. In either case, or in both cases, we thank you. You made his life and my mother's special. That is a debt we can never repay. For now, we accept our loss and look to the day of eternal gain and reunion. Wishing God's blessings for you and your families, we thank you again and say goodbye.